Okay. It doesn't look like USB to me, but. The power, it's, yeah, it is a USB. Oh, okay, it is a USB. All right, he did that. We deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. We pause to reflect on our sins and bring them before God for his forgiveness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. O oh Lord God, you led your ancient people through the wilderness and brought them to the promised land. Guide the people of your church that follow our Savior, that we may walk through the wilderness of this world toward the glory of the world to come. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We share with one another a sign of his peace. The peace of the Lord be with you. You know, this past week, um, as we were coming together as a worship team, preparing for this Sunday, the Lord had a different plan. You know, the, the mind of man plans his ways and the Lord directs his steps. Well, he directed our steps in a different direction. And he brought us back a little bit to some simplicity. And the worship just being simple, not that it isn't heartfelt because it always is with us, but... I encourage you today as we worship Jesus Christ, our King, that you would let him just bless your heart. Heal, heal your insides to your outside. Sometimes we ask for the outside healing. Heal us from the inside out. And remind us of his great, great, deep, deep love for you and me. There is no one that loves us like Jesus. No one. No one has the capacity, but Jesus Christ, our King, does. And Jesus, we thank you that before we were even born, you loved us so much, you planned for us. We thank you, Jesus Christ, that before we were born, you knew the hairs on our head. You knew that this very week, things were going to change for us that we didn't expect. And it's all good because it's of you. So, Father, we surrender, just like we did this week, we surrender our plans to your highway, to your precious way, to your best way for our lives. And we ask you, Lord, today as we worship you with these songs, a heart of worship. We're starting with the song, The Heart of Worship. The music fades and everything's stripped away and we just come. We just want to come to you, Lord, and we, we know you will receive us. You will receive us unto yourself. Even as we walk this earth, receive our praise. When the music fades, all is stripped away, and I simply come, longing just to bring something that's of worth, that will bless your heart. I'll bring you more than a song 
for a song in itself is not what you have required. You search much deeper within through the way things appear. You're looking into my heart. I'm coming back to the and it's all about you all about you Jesus I'm sorry Lord for the thing I've made it when it's all about you all about you When it's all about you, all about you, Jesus. Behold, I'm doing a new thing. Do you not perceive it? I've seen it in my life and the life of many people I know that when God's going to do a new thing, there's a breaking down and a deconstruction of the old. And it hurts sometimes. Father, many of us here are entering a new season, a different season than we expected. And I ask you, Lord, to show us your higher plan and your higher way for us as we walk through it, to embrace it. In the crushing, in the pressing, you are making new wine. In the soil I now surrender, you are breaking new ground. So I yield to you and to your careful plan. When I trust you, I don't need to understand. So make me your vessel. Make me an offering, make me whatever you want me to be. 
I came here with nothing but all you have given me. Jesus, bring you one out of me. In the crushing, in the pressing, you are making new wine. In the soil I now surrender, you are breaking new wine. You are breaking new ground. So make me your vessel. Make me an offering. Make me whatever you want me to be. I came here with nothing. All you have given me, Jesus, bring you one out of me. Jesus, bring you one out of me. Jesus, bring you one out of me. Because where there is new wine, there is new power. There is new freedom, and the kingdom is here. I lay down my old flames to carry your new fire today. So make me a vessel, make me an offering. Make me whatever you want me to be. I came here with nothing, but all you have given me. Jesus, bring you one out of me. Jesus, bring you one out of me. Jesus, bring you wine out of me. There's a song, very simple song. And when I'm at the mission ministering, we sing it quite often because it's kind of a confidence builder as people there accept Jesus Christ as their Lord. It's very evangelical. The song is, I've decided to follow Jesus. And they sing that song because they know what they were. And now they know who they are in Christ. But the second verse of that song is, though none go with me, still I will follow. And there are many, many times that we make decisions. In their case, it was a decision that I need a Savior, Jesus be my Lord. But there are many times we make decisions that people may not understand and be against us for. But we know God said to us, do this. And when God says, do this, we do it. And sometimes we do it alone. So I encourage someone today who's facing a life decision. And people don't understand, but God, you know that you know that you know that you know that God said, do this. Follow me in this area. Follow me in this path. I encourage you to do it. Though none go with you, still you will follow him. And I promise you, as you walk it out with him, people are going to start going with you as well. You unravel me with a melody. You surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a 
child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. From my mother's womb, you have chosen me. Love has called my name. I've been born again into your family. Your blood flows through my veins. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. child of God. You split the sea so I could walk right through it. My fears were drowned in perfect love. You rescued me so I could stand and sing. I am a child of God. I am a child of God, oh Lord. I am a child of God. Oh, yes, I am. I am a child. Now I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I am a child of God. I am a child of God. You unravel me with a melody. And Lord, you surround me with a song. Hide me. Under your 
Mountains rise and thunders roar. I will soar with you above the storm. Father, you are king over the flood. And I will be still and know you are God. Find rest, my soul. In Christ alone, know his power in quietness and trust when the oceans rise and thunders roar. I will soar with you above the storm. Father, you are king over the flood. And I will be still and know you are God. When the oceans rise and thunders roar, I will soar with you above the storm. Father, you are king over the flood. And I will be still and know you are God. Find rest, my soul, in Christ alone. Know his power in quietness and trust. When the oceans rise and thunders roar, I will soar with you above the storm. Father, you are king over the flood, and I will be still and know you are God. When the oceans rise and thunders roar, I will soar with you above the storm. Father, you are king over the flood, and I will be still and know you. I will be still and know you are God. I will be still and know you are God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to you, Lord, we worship you. King of kings and Lord. worship you, almighty God. We worship you. The Old Testament reading for the first Sunday in Lent is from Deuteronomy chapter 26. When you come into the land that the Lord your God is giving you for an inheritance and have taken possession of it and live in it, you shall take some of the first of all the fruit of the ground which you harvest from your land that the Lord is giving to you 
and you shall put it in a basket. And you shall go to the place that the Lord your God will choose to make his name to dwell there. And you shall go to the priest who is in office at that time and say to him, I declare today to the Lord your God that I have come into the land that the Lord swore to, swore to our fathers to give us. Then the priest shall take that basket from your hand and set it down before the altar of the Lord your God. And you shall make response before the Lord your God. A wandering Aramean was my father, and he went down into Egypt and sojourned there. Few in number, and there he became a nation, great, mighty, and populous. And the Egyptians treated us harshly and humiliated us and laid us, hard, and laid us on us hard labor. Then we cried to the Lord, the God of our fathers, and the Lord heard our voice and saw our affliction, our toil, and our oppression. And the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, with great deeds of terror, with signs and wonders. And he brought us into this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. And behold, now I bring the first of the fruit of the ground, which you, O Lord, have given me. And you shall set it down before the Lord your God and worship before the Lord your God. And you shall rejoice in all the good that the Lord your God has given to you and to your house, you and the Levite and the sojourner who is among you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from Romans chapter 10. The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is, the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. For the scripture says, everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing his riches, riches on all who call on him. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand to honor our Lord's gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the fourth chapter. Jesus, full of the Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit to the wilderness for 40 days, being tempted by the devil. And he ate nothing during these days. And when they were ended, he was hungry. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become bread. And Jesus answered him, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone. And the devil took him up and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time and said to him, To you I will give all this authority and their glory, for it has been delivered to me, and I give it to whom I will. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. And Jesus answered him, It is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. And he took him to Jerusalem and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to guard you. And on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. And Jesus answered him, It is said, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. And when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him until an opportune time. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Grace to you and peace from God, our Father, and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 
This last Wednesday, we observed Ash Wednesday. Many came here and throughout the world and received a reminder that we are dust, and to dust we shall return. It was on that day that we, were, we heard about the fact that we are not permanent here on this earth. I used an image that I'll probably repeat many times during this year's season of Lent, the thought of scraping our windows during the winter months. If you're blessed as I am in the parsonage where you get to park indoors at night, you don't always have that ice to deal with, but generally, sooner or later, you have to scrape your windows. And on Wednesday, I shared with people how the correct way is to remove it all, to scrape away until you have every last bit of the glass cleared, both in the front and on the sides, but also in the back. The bad way is to do what some of us have done in the past, and that is to just make a little peephole, just so you can see enough that you think that will be okay, and you think that'll be sufficient for, for what you're going to do. Hold on to that image. We'll return to it a couple of times yet today. Three temptations that we know of. There may have been other temptations that uh, Satan had said, but especially in our gospel reading for today, we see three. The first one is that Jesus was hungry. Being fully God and fully man, he experienced the same things that we did. And after 40 days without food, this morning when the children were here, I was trying to convey to them the idea of temptation and of hunger. And if they saw candy or cookies that were available, they know that they need to ask for permission. May I have a snack? May I have a piece of candy? May I have a cookie? But now with Jesus having gone 40 days with nothing to eat, I eat three meals a day at least. I rarely feel incredible hunger, but imagine the intensity of his hunger after 40 days without food. Here comes Satan. Satan says, if you are hungry, take these rocks and make them into bread. And Jesus also knowing scripture was able to remind him from Deuteronomy chapter 8 that man does not live by bread alone. But let's look at the full quote. And he humbled you and let you hunger and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you know, that he might make you know that man does not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that comes from the mouth of God. He humbled them and he humbles us. Imagine when the children of Israel were out journeying for those 40 years, they didn't have time. They didn't have the means to always set up an oven and to bake bread and to make these things. And they were hungry. So God caused the dew in the morning to turn into a very odd substance. And they didn't know what it was. And in Hebrew, they asked, what is this? Or mana, or we call it manna. What is this? this white flaky stuff. Remember that they were told to gather enough because God provides for us daily bread, gather enough for the day. And on the day before the Sabbath, so on Friday, gather double. But if they kept it, it would be filled with maggots. So their attempt to gather even more so that they would have some in reserve, maybe even skip a day of this gathering, no, nope. only for the day. So they were humbled and had to rely on the Lord their God for the bread that came. But also, later on, he also provided birds, birds that were able to be eaten so they had both bread and meat that every word that comes, they were to live on every word that comes from the mouth of God. What blessed people we are to have the whole of Scripture, both Old Testament and New Testament, 
to have everything that nourishes us and feeds our faith. We can actually get into the very mind of God as we read his words and see what he caused men to be inspired to write, and we have it in our word today. In his word, we have it for the building up of our faith, to build us, to make us stronger, not with just bread that fortifies our body, but the very words of God that strengthen our faith. And in getting into his mind, we also remember that in the Old Testament, there were a lot of rules, especially in the book of Leviticus. If you read it, it's one of the bloodiest, most amazing descriptions of what God required as far as sacrifices. Blood and life had to be shed. But finally, it was the blood on the cross that took care of all our sins. The Lamb of God who took away the sins of the world. No more are we bound by those rules. The blood of the animals, the death of an animal, and the blood and the death of our Savior for us. Those are the words that we read and we rejoice that he has given that to us, but the devil wasn't done. The second temptation. Imagine standing before God and offering him everything that he made, everything that he established. But here we see the devil telling Jesus, the son of God, second person of the Trinity, that if you fall down and worship me, the devil, you can have all this. Why Jesus didn't smite Satan right then and there, I do not know. But I do know what his response was, because we're back in those same stories that we heard ever since Adam and Eve, when Satan shows up and offers you something that was never meant to be that way to begin with. Satan said to Eve, if you eat this fruit, you will be just like God. You will know good and evil. You will know all these things. And so Eve took and she gave some to her husband as well. I wonder if this was a moment when Satan saw the handwriting on the wall. Here is Jesus. The time is coming for the words to be fulfilled that Jesus will crush his head, just as Satan also bruised his heel. The very word of God that was brought back to him made it so clearly. And we go back to that whole image of that windshield again, that during our journey of Lent, removing everything that stands in the way of our vision of seeing the cross and seeing Christ fully, the devil wanted to give him this kingdom that is already under the authority of God and it is his and it's his glory. Remember, ever since we were in confirmation or even in Sunday school, we learned that first commandment that there are to be no other gods before us. And we pray that God will continue to scrape away all that puts something else where only God belongs. Pause to consider it. Satan was offering Jesus, was offering God what was already his. Now, yes, we pause during 40 days of Lent not to be necessarily hungry, but to be hungry that he would fill us, that we remove all the things that stand in our way of seeing him more clearly. And then finally, the third one was standing up on the pinnacle of the temple that if he were to jump off, Jesus would be fine because the angels would bear, the, bear him up. We're not supposed to go after other gods or to tempt our Lord our God. And if we read the part of Scripture that this comes from, we come up with this. For the Lord your God is in your midst, is a jealous God. Lest the anger of the Lord your God be kindled against you and he destroy you from the face of the earth. You shall not put the Lord your God to the test as you tested him at Massah. You shall diligently keep the commandments of the Lord your God and his testimonies and his statutes, which he has commanded you. Even the devil knows scripture. Even the devil thought he was clever in quoting scripture to Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, the one who brings us the faith that embraces this scripture. 
but he's also given us a free, and whether you call it free will, but if we also have a divine or a sanctified common sense, he gave us our minds. How many of us may have had a grandmother or our parents or a teacher tap us on the head when we weren't using good judgment and said, God gave you a brain, use it. In the midst of this image that we have of thinking that it's okay to jump off the, the temple, we even know children are smart enough that once they're told, hot. Maybe they've burned, been burned once, but they know that the warning of something hot on the stove is truly hot. The same way when I get into a car. Now, some of us remember a time when this wasn't the case, where you get into a car and you put on your seatbelt. They even have flight attendants on planes that show you how to put the flat end into the buckle and how to release it. Remember when we rode around in the back of a pickup truck or we rode in the back of a station wagon with no seat belts? I've told you before and I'll remind you again, my mother learned how to use power brakes in that setting and we still all came out mostly all right. How foolish we would be if we didn't use the brain that God has given us to practice safety. If I see anybody standing on this roof thinking they're going to jump off and God's angels will protect them, what about putting God to the test? The same way we put on our seatbelts. One time I, I just really didn't understand the whole seatbelts on an airplane because for the most part it's, it's safe. But anytime you're seated, you're told to always wear your seatbelt. And I remember the time that we were in turbulence and the plane quickly lost altitude. And one of the flight attendants who wasn't strapped in ended up on the ceiling of the airplane. She was injured when she went up and then she came down. There was a reason why they tell us that. And Jesus tells us not to put the Lord God to the test. So back to the windshield image of scraping away those things that keep us from seeing clearly, but also that this time of Lent would restore to us the joy of his salvation, that we would be upheld with a right spirit, that a contrite heart he will not despise. He takes us as we are. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, that we would have eternal life that there's no way that we can earn him and be blessed by him other than out of his great love and mercy. In a spiritual way, I hope we wrestle a bit with God during Lent, not waiting for him to eventually overcome us and pin us down and tell us that he is God, but to wrestle with those things in our lives that need to be put aside so that we can see him more clearly to wrestle with those sins that we love so much, to put them aside, not for 40 days, but forever, and to see more clearly his love for us. Might it be more than scraping away all that clouds our vision of God, but to be emptied, to have everything that is in us that needs to go to be emptied out, that we would be filled with him, that that void would be so filled to overflowing that at the other end of Lent, as we come to the resurrection, we see him all the more clearly. We pray that God does this for his sake and for ours. In the name of Jesus, amen. We stand to pray. Well, we stand for the Apostles' Creed, and then we'll pray. We confess our faith in the words that the church throughout the world uses to talk about what it is that we believe. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, descended to hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. The Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. 
We pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Jesus, who was tempted but did not sin, the last few years have been filled with sickness, death, job loss, isolation, anxiety, fear, and division. We are still weary, Lord. We have hope, but some in our community are still sick. We confess our cynicism and our skepticism, and we ask for your renewal. Give us eyes to see the kingdom, the life that Christ has promised us, and fill us with the hope that allows us to live each day with soberness, generosity, and joy. Lord, in your mercy. Jesus, who was tempted but did not sin, bless our Lenten journey. Remove from us all that clouds our vision of you. Remove all that replaces you in our heart, uh, that replaces you in our hearts and lives. Remove all that distracts us and things we can, things we can do on our own, even if only for a little while. Empty us, dear Jesus, and fill us with your love, your mercy, your forgiveness, and your light. Lord, in your mercy. Jesus, who was tempted but did not sin, bless the Capella Choir of Concordia University, Chicago, a place some of us know as Concordia River Forest. Some of our members were trained to be teachers at that Concordia. Memories still fill our hearts with the joy and gift of education. Bless these young people as they travel. Bless their message in song. Send your holy angels to watch over them as they travel. And bless all who go to Resurrection in Cairo, New York on Thursday to hear their music. Lord, in your mercy. Jesus, who was tempted but did not sin, we pray that you, and just as the Father is of all mercy and a God of comfort, we pray that there would only be help for us in our time of need. Help us to look to you only as your servants. We also commit those who are ill and who are recovering. We pray for Tim and Nancy, Patty, Tony, Rose, Barb, and all who seek your healing. Grant them courage. Grant them healing. Lord, in your mercy. Jesus, who was tempted but did not sin, we thank you for the joyful gathering of seniors this past Wednesday. Through word and sacrament, you visited them with the most tremendous gifts of all, yourself. We thank you for the lunch and time of fellowship. Watch over these, our brothers and sisters, until the day that we anticipate coming together again. Lord, in your mercy. Lord Jesus, who was tempted but did not sin, we pray for our school especially for Anthony Rodriguez and his ministry as a teacher's aide and also with the after-school program. We pray for our brothers and sisters in Williston Park at St. John's Lutheran Church. We ask that your will be done, that your word would be proclaimed, and that children and congregations would be built up in you. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As we come forward to receive the body and blood of Christ, I do ask that you hold out your hand so I can put the host in your hand. I know some have uh, the custom of receiving in your mouth, but if you could receive it in your hand, that would be very helpful for me. Thank you. Come, the Lord invites you to his supper.
Please stand. The precious body and precious blood of Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in true faith and to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. We pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Before the benediction, if the sheet that you filled out with your attendance, if you would hand that to me as you exit, that would be very helpful. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. I'm giving you my heart and all that is.
is within I lay it all down for the sake of you my king I'm giving you my dreams I'm laying down my rights I'm giving up my pride for the promise of new life and I surrender all to you, all to you, and I surrender all to you, all to you. I'm singing you this song, I'm waiting at the cross, and all the world holds dear, I count it all as loss, for the sake of knowing you, the glory of your name, to know the lasting joy, even sharing in your pain. I surrender all to you, all to you, and I surrender all to you, all to you, and I sake of you my king I'm giving you my dreams I'm laying down my rights I'm giving up my pride for the promise of new life and I surrender all to you all to you and I surrender all to you all to you Amen 